Okay, step five, creating an effective advertising message. I'd like to take some time here to go through the seven factors that influence the results of all advertising. The number one reason, I don't care whether you're advertising in yellow pages, whether you're advertising direct mail, radio, billboard, skywriting, I don't care where you're advertising, the number one reason why ads will or will not pull is copy. What are you putting into the ad? What is the price? What are your features and your benefits? What do you have on sale? What hours are you open? What's the purpose of this particular ad? And too often we don't sit down and really create good copy. Your copy should have both features and benefits. If you're selling shirts and you're saying, we have shirts that are polyester and cotton, that's a great feature. We have to go beyond that and we have to tell what the benefit of that is to the customer. What would be the benefit of a shirt that's polyester and cotton? No iron. Okay, much more comfortable. Okay, great for travel, believe me. All right, all I had to do this morning is put it in the shower. All right, uh, not in the shower, but I mean in the shower. All right, great. All right, that's what we're talking about. Too often, I see this as a criminal mistake. Advertisers, merchants put features into the ad, they don't put the benefits. You have to stress the benefits. You have to ask yourself this. The customer is probably going to say what? And they're going to say, so what? Big deal, what's in it for me? Why should I buy it from you? Why should I buy this product? And that's where you have to come back and stress the benefits. Stress the benefits. The number one reason why ads, I don't care where they're at, the number one reason why ads will or will not pull is copy. What do you put in it? And too often, merchants say, well, we'll go with a sale. All right, yeah, uh, and we'll go with 5% off. You might as well buy lottery tickets because it's not going to be any good. That kind of a, that kind of a pull just isn't going to do it, okay? Artwork is the next. The others aren't any, in any necessary order, but the number one is copy, all right? Artwork is so very important. And artwork is illustrations. Photographs, and photographs work much better than illustrations. It's verse, it's a nice border. Don't overdo your border. I see too often people overdoing borders. Uh, flowery borders that take away from the ad. The borders are very important. Verse, color. Color increases the response of an ad 43%. 43%. We should be using more color in ads. It's a very effective way to make sure that you get response. Now that 43% is nationwide. It might even be higher here. The nationwide, about 43% more response. It's one of the best investments that you could possibly go with when you're talking about newspaper advertising. Make sure that your artwork shows people enjoying your product. If you're selling barbecues, just don't show the barbecue. Show the barbecue with the family around it having a great time. Because you're not just selling the barbecue, what are you selling? What else are you selling? Atmosphere. That whole atmosphere, right? Of having a good time around the barbecue, all right? And that this barbecue is going to bring the family together. The family that barbecues together stays together. All right? Almost like that. And that's what you have to do. Now, there are occasions where you cannot do that. I realize that. You can't put a picture of people around everything in all of your ads. But when you have that opportunity to do so, do it, okay? Because people then identify with that artwork. They say, that's me. Show you an ad pretty soon that I'm going to uh, comment on that just doesn't have the right kind of artwork, and artwork would have really helped us, okay? The size and length of the ad, okay? The size of the ad makes a difference. The length of the ad, obviously, because on radio, makes a big difference, okay? A one-by-one one is not going to get the same response as a full-page ad. Frequency, though, folks, is probably even more important, okay? It's not how many push-ups a day you do, it's how often you do the push-ups, right? It's not how many sit-ups a day, uh, in one day that you do, it's how often you do the sit-ups. And advertising's like exercise. Advertising's like going on a diet. You don't go on a diet one weekend. Too often, I've had advertisers come to me and say, well, merchants come to me and they say, I'll run an ad one time, see what kind of response I get. They ever tell you that thing? Yeah. Tell them, take your money, go out to It's a better investment. 
because you're not going to get the response that you want. Not unless you give me such fantastic copy and say, I'm going out of business, come in and get everything you want, all right? All right? Anything you want to get, right? You're going to get the spot. But frequency is much better than a big ad. I would rather have an ad over a period of a month than one big ad once a month. Every week, every week. Consider it to be like exercise. It's better to jog 15 minutes a day than an hour a month because you're getting more out of it. And that's what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the frequency there, the frequency, the frequency. Because people will forget you. And if you're the first time advertising in something, then obviously they're not going to understand <coughs> if you're around. Next one is timing, take 14 timing. <coughs> what day of the week should you run? What day of the month should you run? Right? Very important. Should we time it around the time that people are having their paychecks? When do the social security checks come in? Maybe that would make a big difference. When does the plant get paid? That makes a big difference. Find out from your chamber of commerce or your community uh, uh, fathers, whoever, when is the day that most people get paid in this particular community. Maybe you already know. And then try to gear your campaign, your ads around that because people have more spendable income. Never run it right, be uh, right uh, at the tail end, all right, before they get paid or too soon because then they won't have the money, all right? And don't do it a week or so later, they've already spent it, haven't they? What day of the week should you run the weight loss clinic at? Monday. Everybody goes on a diet Monday. I was in Dallas, Texas, and I was flying through there. I wasn't doing a session, but I was at the airport. I picked up the paper at the airport. This was on the weekend, right? And I picked up the paper, and I saw an ad for a diet place. I'm sorry, on Friday or Saturday, I'm looking for the two-for-one margarita chimichanga specials, right? <laughs> I don't want to go on a diet on Friday. Do you want to go on a diet on Friday? No way. But Monday? Okay. I eat too many tacos. So therefore, let me go on a diet. So timing is so very important. Very important. Find the people. It's a small window. You have to hit them when they're wanting that particular product. Okay? And find out when people want your product. You have to do some research. That goes back to your planning that we talked about before, see? You plan and find out when do people want my product. And then I'll make sure that my 